Right, so I'm going to start. Okay, thanks for being. So let's start with a quick for um for Vermont. So if you took so this is this is uh, online comments, right? So online comments, you can get at in some ways depending. So this was an analysis of discuss D I S Q U S, which you see at the bottom of some. Yeah, you know, it's it's not great. I mean, there are various kinds of. Uh, Discussion things that are added to different places. You know, they have bespoke ones, maybe the New York Times. Uh, this Kinja appears in a lot of them. Discuss is one that's been around for a while. Facebook comments as well, right? Like, so, you know, you have your page and then you just sort of stick Facebook on it, which of course is an evil Facebook thing, right? I mean, every time you log in with a Facebook thing and now Apple or whatever, you're just making the whole thing more connected and more dangerously explosive. All right, so this is an analysis of comments and looking at um, people's, uh, you know, where they're from in the US. Uh, so how do you think Vermont comes off on a measure of toxicity? So I'm just, you know, we've, we've done these measures of, you know, basically happiness, we're going to go through a few others, but this is a me measure of toxicity. In the middle. I'll show you for geography for happiness that you know, at least on Twitter in you know 2012, 13, 14, pretty high, top, top, you know, sometimes number one, two, three. Um, variance is a little lower, right? So there's less swearing, there's less, you know, it's like it's that kind of New England shut down a little bit, you know. So, but, but, with a positive thing. Okay, so let's, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna examine this a little bit, and then we'll come back to happiness for geography because it's great. Um, okay, so it is. This is a wired. This is a wired um, uh, article from, uh, this is true, never read the comments. We have a rule within StoryLab is never read the tweets. Just don't, never read an individual tweet. This, you know, like, this is like prevent harm. Um, it's, but it, 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 I mean, it's sort of a joke, but it's also like, that's not how you, we want to operate with these things. And we don't want to take one tweet and say it matters um, out of context. All right. Okay. So. 92 million comments, 16 month period, da, da, da. the most trolliest time. And number one is Vermont. The most toxic comments come from people in Vermont. So this article is, what's the date on this? 2017, okay, all right. So, you know, it's in the era of Trump. So maybe, you know, maybe, maybe Vermont's upset because it's very, you know, I think there's DC voted more for for Clinton, you know, generally speaking, DC is, is you know, 90% Democrat or something like that, then it's usually Vermont. So maybe that's it. Um, so they've got these things here, Vermont, right? Any other state. This is the least toxic state in the US. New Hampshire, right? So this is all pretty surprising. There's lots of stuff in here, how they rate comments. So let's have a look. They, they've got some examples. So here's the problem. These are six examples for us. And, you know, we don't know how they were chosen, but they're... I mean, if it's got Hitler in it, you'd think. <laughs> so why, you know, what, so why is this? Why is Vermont the most, like, what's, what's the story? So why do you assume that? Let's let's just think about it. So 2017. I, well, the, you know what? I guess that's when this is published, but it's it's in the period leading up to and maybe into it a bit, something like that. Turmoil. But it really goes against the story of Vermont, right? Which is you know singing in the hills and stuff, and you know. <laughs> Well, that's friends. <laughs> oh, Wired wants me to pay. Come on, Wired. No. I pay for a lot of things. Okay, so this is when the trolls are acting. Yeah, they did a whole thing. They did a whole thing. All right. So people actually wrote to us about this. That's how we found out about it um, at the time. And I, I, I was just thinking about it. I wanted to. Anyway, so apparently, so the thing is, they gave you examples there right in that Wired thing. But. It's somewhat hidden as to how this thing works. It also problematically works at the sentence level, 
which is hard, right? It's just hard to do things well at the sentence level. People can say they measure all sorts of things, but you really have to look at what's being produced. So anyway, so the, here's the thing. Um, what happened was, um, well, there's a black box thing. That's what they used, right? And, and so, for example, this is an 87% toxicity. I am a gay black woman. So, so there was a librarian in Vermont who kind of saw this story, kind of got, you know, excited about it and wondered what was going on. So it's Jigsaw is the thing um, made by Google's alphabet. Hold on, Google, how's it working? Is an alphabet the outer box? Yeah, yeah okay, all right. Okay. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> Are they called alphabetas? Alphabetas? If you go to metamates? Alphabeta mates? Sorry. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, it's been funny to watch them over a long period of time, you know, because they were so, you know, it was a creative startup thing. 20% of your time could be like just anything, you know, which I think is still true. Right. They've killed so many things that were pretty cool, but they just weren't. I don't know. So um, anyway, so this is. So here it is. So the problem is this API. Um, yeah. Here, here's, here's the here's the tweet I was trying to get to. So this is the person. Oh, she's still she's still around online. Let's see. Let's dangerously go to Twitter. Yeah. So you got a it got a lot of um, you know, response. And so this was she just tried the little API because it was online. So just played around with it. And this is just a thing to try. You know, it's a structured, you know, organized sequence thing. So you can think about it that way. Of course. You could choose anything and put it put put it in there. So this is the this is the sort of toxicity you know trend. And so you can see this is problematic because these are just statements of identity. Um, it's not saying anything about anyone else. Uh, and, and you know we don't know what we don't know what went into this uh, this thing. I, I have no idea. I mean you're pretty pretty courageous to put it out there, but people still do it. I mean. Microsoft seems to every three or four years come up with a little bot that people can train online and, and immediately Reddit or whatever just appears and makes it you know a racist thing. Um, so that's uh, that's really problematic. Um, this was this is based on this story that Vermont was found to be the most toxic state in based on comments online really? through discuss. But the problem is they were using some. It's all based on this AI thing that black box that this is this is an example of how it functions. It functions at the sentence level and is really um, more evidently problematic. Well, what you know, I don't know. They're just percentages, right? So you you um, oh no, this is more toxic. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Well, at least the direction is that way, and then you'd be ranking is basically all you can do. So. Um, I don't know if, you know, like above 50 is toxic, like, you know, like there's no, there's no sense of what that means, right? At, at least in this. I mean, you know, you could imagine lots of uh, responses to this. This is from a few years ago, right? So anyway, the article, it's Engadget put it together, which was nice. Um, oh, see, okay. Now we're getting a bit more. New York Times used, oh, they used New York Times and Wikipedia. Damn. Ay, 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 ay. See, it's in the end, it's still there's not a person, you know, evaluating each sentence. They've made a thing that does it based on sort of what they think people do, and um, yeah. yeah. So there's the example. This is another one, right? So this is. I mean, my God. Just and uh, the person who is a librarian in, in Vermont, they were just yeah, they're just testing things out just to see what else. Is going on. Anyway, so um, there's more to it, but uh, it was a bug. 
I mean, the thing is, you can't see what's inside these things. And, and you know, we have built very simple-minded pieces that you can ask questions of. But it, that, so part of the problem is that story comes out. Probably people probably think that's true still, right? Because it got big splash, and you can make a story up for it, right? But maybe you know Vermont. So why is Vermont getting a higher score? It may be because it, people just talk about problematic issues more, you know, engage with it. And New Hampshire doesn't. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what, like, maybe Vermont is the most likely, but like, this is not the right measure, right? It's, but, but it's plausible, for example, that's another story for why, why New Hampshire might be at the bottom and Vermont's at the top. Um, you know, Vermont is awoke or whatever, and they're trying to like, you know, the ones that are online on Discuss talk, you know, it's that, it's that, there's a sampling thing as well. So, and there are just a sort of more generally, there are so many papers that say things based on words used in text in large scale that you have no idea what, how they're scoring it. Or maybe if you do, they don't show you the words that are kind of moving things up and down. And slowly. Okay. So, let me talk about this some more. We're going to move into, I don't know if we'll get there today, but we're going to get into other emotions and then more, more fundamentally into meaning, which, you know, I've kind of been alluding to. Um, and hopefully we can sort of redo a bunch of uh, assignment questions with these different measures. Right. There's not one because I kept failing to be happy with one that I was making. So, um, so you're good tomorrow, yeah, okay. which I'm sure is good. Um, good? Okay. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Well, I like to have one little thing. I might put a little placeholder thing so it just says chill or something. Um, you can do that. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, you could watch the show. <laughs> I don't want you to. Uh, something bad has happened here, and that is okay. So I am going to. I have a dead PDF. So the way to get this, oof, that's a bad situation. Thankfully, I guess I've put them here, right? And maybe they're not dead. Wow. Way tech goes wrong. Wow, that is slow. Oh, is that the problem? I wonder if my slides are too big. Okay. Okay. Oh, so this is no good. All right. So this is uh this was just a blog post. Our blog got destroyed by UVM saying we can't have certain things. So we're rebuilding it. It's been a couple of years. So um so that was a bit of a loss. Uh anyway, we had a post about this. I got a lot of press at the time. Yeah, not even a paper. 
Right, this sort of took off. So this was a just a fun little thing, just playing around. This is Manhattan, um, you know, uh, just sort of pixelated. And then we had we had we had early on with Twitter, there are plenty of tweets that came out that had that, that appeared that had um, geo associated with them, right? So lat long and. Um, Oh, there's a little detail about that we'll talk about. Uh, let me write that down. Flat one was a thing. Yeah, that's the Central Park. Well, so so happy is this one. So this this is not enough data, and this a uh, you know this is a bit of a sparser area up here. Um, my fastest ride around here was like 13, 13 minutes or 13 something. It's like close to 27 miles now. Um, anyway, so this is, uh, um, you know, just a bit of a fun thing. And Strawberry Fields was the highest score, right? People go there, they tweet the positive things. Um, and yeah, just it was a, just a light thing. It was just a light thing. It got a ton of... Um, tension at the time and you know we went on to do proper things but like this this is really weird this there's a billboard ad just appeared for no real reason and saying that Times Square is the happiest place in New York which wasn't true right we didn't so a we didn't find that and it's like compiled by tracking tweets that included specific happy and sad words to the University of Vermont this is total garbage <laughs> it's just completely wildly made up um I don't I don't even know what yeah Anyway, advertising. Right. It was in Times Square. Yeah, it's a bull. <laughs> Pretty weird. So, so because we started, to, you know, we're doing geography. I mean, you know, you you write you you do things because they matter or whatever. But some things will take off, but potentially take off more more than others. Um, like the stretchable word thing. People bring up radio interviews for that. I'm like, why are you want to? Anyway. Um, this is this is going to have a lot of comparative stuff, right? State against state, city against city. We have about 500 cities, so they're going to be ranked, and you can kind of then start to tell stories or whatever, and people can get upset or whatever. So, have I lost my what happened? There? Did it compile? Yeah, okay, it's alive. I don't know what happened. Okay, so um, yeah, a lot of press, and unfortunately that blog post is dead still, but. Okay, so we eventually did a, you know, a proper thing where we, we did it by state. And as I said, um, about one, well, I didn't say this, 1% of all tweets early on had a lat long associated with it, you know, which of course may or may not be wrong, but it's very, it was precise because it's your phone. Um, we're trying to rebuild that now with uh, ways of estimating people's locations. You know, we don't want to do this a creepy way, but based on their what, what they say in their bio. And that gets, actually gets you about 5% of all tweets will have a position. Uh, we have a little Twitter handle, which I'm sure is sort of dead now. Um, there's a bunch of press, which I'll show you some of this. And so this is a particular you know, way of, this is a different color scheme for happiness, but less happy to more happy. You can kind of see this overall structure, at least for this year, it's pretty good. Vermont's doing pretty well for itself up here. Um, and uh, we can look at the online thing in a little piece. I'm sure we've just, our website has really, you know, had a lot of trouble. Oh, okay, so that's alive. That's good. That's good. <laughs> NSF tweeted about it. NSF thought it was good. Okay. Uh, Mostly my, my yeah, friends and I talk about Manti Hose. You and do? Then, so it's a, it's a strange <laughs> group. All right, let's go to our take two.
I'm talking about Twitter. I pointed out Chrissy is a oh. prolific tweeter. Don't tell me you're going to have tweets now. I think too. just this morning, actually. Oh. We have one of just one of your tweets from this morning. You <laughs> say, in reference to what I don't know, you say, oh, shut up about your deviated septum. You got a nose job. Who cares? Wow. Chrissy, were you talking to anybody in particular there, or was this I just did, a general you statement? You know, when I tweet, I really am not imagining these are going to end up on the Today Show. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, I think of them as more private than that for some weird reason. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, nobody... By the way, this is Chrissy Teigen, right? So who became a really big character on Twitter and eventually got off at lots of so in terms of toxicity, got accused of all sorts of things. Most of the, most of these older interviews, of people are wrong. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. Um, uh, that's El Roca. I mean, I'll, I'll just show you this. Well, let's watch it. I know, no, no, I know, I forget. No, it's it's a fun little outlet. I think I talk more on there, speaking of the talking thing, than I actually do in, in real life, so. You're a very funny tweeter. Thank you. So now the University of Vermont has this study. They looked at 10 million tweets, wow. if you can believe it, to figure out where the country's happiest and saddest Twitter users live. They look for words like happy, reunion, LOL, and then sad words like hate, greed, and profanity. So the happiest cities were, any guesses on this one? Napa, California. I mean, you've got the. I don't think there's any surprise there. there. Oh, yeah. 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 San Clemente, interesting. I had an ex-boyfriend from San Clemente, and I wasn't happy there. Oh. 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 No. Did you know this, John? Oh. Did you know about this? Oh. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Hashtag happy. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll Happy estates are Hawaii. Which one? Oh, right. No. It's so, it's so reminding The obliviousness? Well, if you, I mean, I first had stuff, I think, yeah, in the New York Times, our work on River Networks was written about in 998. And then sort of periodically we've had stuff, you know, you can't control this and that Pox has all that sort of stuff in it. But, um, it is weird, right? So what you have to really make sure is the message you kind of leave, you know, the, the sound, you want to work on the sound bites because they're going to be, they're going to make them up. But, you know, there's a limit. You can't obviously control this, you know, so. Control <laughs> <laughs> well, Maine and Nevada. Nevada is surprising. That's surprising, yeah. too. Well, a lot of marriages go, you know, they have a lot of marriages. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, well, I guess they're happy when you're in Nevada, yeah. and yeah. it's not so happy. Yeah. Maybe. And then you go back to the saddest state. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the saddest cities. Yeah. Where the yeah. saddest, saddest cities, cities are. A couple of them in Texas. Okay. Texas City, Texas, Beaumont, Texas, and then Albany, Georgia, which is huh. in southwest Surprise. Georgia. So those, these people from Nevada are then returning to Texas. Apparently. Broke into the saddest states. Louisiana, Mississippi, and Maryland. <laughs> Maybe because they're sad in Maryland because nobody, Ooh, I got some very nobody happy pays attention to Washington and not Maryland. Uh, okay, like an inferiority complex yeah. kind of thing. I don't know. All right. All right, our take three now is the aforementioned <laughs> Manti Hodes. I apologize oh, for this. I don't understand. I don't know what that is. Yeah, so that's a while back. Um, you know, you just don't know what's going to happen when these things appear. Uh, anyway, so this is, uh, I'll, let me see. There were a couple others I was going to show you. This is kind of, let's see if we can work. Welcome back to the Road Show. This up. morning in the buzz. Do you think Rhode Island's happy? Look at the smile we have on her face. Not compared to Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii was found out to be the number one happiest state in the country. Of I know we're shocked by that, right? Whoa. We're shocked by that. You're yeah. right near the water. Absolutely. It's beautiful. That's Pineapple everywhere. <laughs> That's according to a uh, new research done by the University of Vermont who yep. sifted through a bunch of Twitter accounts and Twitter itself to get all this research. And when we say they did research, we, they have charts, they have graphs. Pages. It was very, pages. very technical as far as how deep they went and to see how happy uh, people were across the country. Definitely technical for Twitter, for right. that matter, as well. Uh, Rhode Island, of course, falling in at number 35 and, you know, on that list. For being 35, I don't think it's horrible. I don't think it's bad, and I get that okay. Hawaii was one of the happiest places. You know what? Let's take a look at this. <laughs> Everyone that lives in Hawaii, first of all, you're on an island. Okay, so they this is like seven minutes long. I'm not going to play this, but they digest it. You know, they really cope with it. They really try to deal with this. They interview a couple of people. They're out skating. They interview a couple of, like, random Rhode Islanders just to ask them why. <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. 
yeah. this is really good. This is really kind of nice. So there's a lot of local news. People really, yeah, they really got into it. Um, there was one, I don't know if I have it here, but there was one where, uh, um, oh, I've gone to the wrong place. They, um, oh, I know. It's in the thing. Second. I don't know if I have, there's one in Connecticut where, is there a place called Waterbury or something like that? Or Water, is that right? Waterbury. Okay, so pretty bad on the list of cities. And they did a local news thing and they went and interviewed people out in the street and everyone's like, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> it, was kind of, it was kind of bad. And they, they finished the thing, it's just not going well. And they finished like, let's go to a chocolate factory. So they go to the local chocolate factory and that's how they finished their pitch, which is you know, good for them. It was like, it was like trying, to, trying to get out of this pretty, but they're like, yeah, the roads are terrible, like, or whatever, you know, like they, they, they were sort of specific actually. I'll show you some more of that, but I don't, it's all awesome. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, I look, this is not to, we're not, I mean, it's, it's bad that there's variations, please, you know, obviously in, a lot of this is socioeconomic, right? So what you want is cities and places to be able to get better and like have a trajectory. And that's, you know, I think in the US, if you look for, back to 1970, like wage, if you adjust it properly, you know, with inflation, it's basically kind of there, right? And things like healthcare and um, education have all gone up. TVs have gone down, you know, like this, it's, it's, not, it's not been a, it's been a complicated, number of decades anyway so but you want one place to go but anyway you also need to be able to measure these things and kind of look how they're going over time um people will cheat at everything so i'm sure they can cheat at measuring happiness let me see if the last one what's that last one i have little shortcuts of them okay this is El so it made the ellen sh ellen who was you know, you know apparently twitter just did a study to find the happiest city in the country did you hear about this they looked at all, over 10 million tweets and right exactly so now by this point it's like we're gone now twitter did the study i mean this is fine this is what happens right the, yeah, right and um and now right okay and now it's just She's going to make a joke. Recorded which areas use the happiest words. And then they determined that the happiest city is Napa, California. Have you been there? It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Obviously, this is tourists, right? I mean, it's the same with Hawaii. Like, you can look at the words as tourists. You know, and, right. So and we didn't do this, but you could figure out who was traveling and who wasn't. You could break that apart. Right. But, okay. I would like to live there someday. It's beautiful. It's uh, it's wine country, and it's always 72 degrees, plenty of land. So I sent my reporter Amy there to ask people what makes them so happy. Hi, Ellen. I'm reporting from beautiful Lapin Alley. <laughs> You're reporting from where? Lapin Napa Valley. Right. <laughs> have you? How much have you had to drink? No, I haven't seen Lincoln, but listen. <laughs> So they get two minutes out of that. Yeah, it's, just, it's like a comedy bit. Right. Um, so that that rose to a, you know, that got a fair amount of press. People are, you know, people, social comparison, right? People people want to know about these things. So uh, we have had, why am I doing this the wrong way? Yeah. Um, we have, we've, you know, we've had this, he done thing sitting here for a long time. Hopefully we'll be able to make it real time again, but it's been uh, predicts. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, you know, this is a more complicated visualization and you guys have seen enough now to um, have played around with these things. So, right, so you can roll over. So Andy Reagan built this, we kind of worked on, you know, we were trying to do, you know, we we're trying to really use the web to, to make something powerful. It's not going to work on a phone. Um, cell phones were still sort of probably, you know, it's 2012, 13, but so, so Vermont's ranked number four. And what it does is it, uh, you know, the big, so you always need this, right? I think, I think in general, map plus ranked list, lots of things work having both of those things in concert. Um, 
Like, cause if you just have a map, you're just trying to figure out, you know, the number one one and if, and, and this is, this makes it clear, but then you can't see geography, you can't see correlations very easily from this. It's pretty nicely done. If you roll over a bar, it, um, so this is Alaska, it gives you the word shift. So it's gonna be, um, you know, Alaska relative to everyone else. So, you know, there's more of this, more of these words, these positive words, it's one of these nice interactive ones again. Right, so you can do this kind of business, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's pretty out of control. Um, and what's going on with Hawaii? So Hawaii is here. You know, Hawaii's got beach, resort, right, beautiful. I think Diamond is in there. So Diamond is the Diamond Head um, volcano or what a crater, which is just next to Honolulu, you know, it's, International is probably the airport. Anyway, so but lots of rainbow is the you know theme like the Hawaii rainbows. That's the um, kind of mascot thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've done some stuff. Yeah, but yeah, and then how things are being talked about. It's gigantically possible. Yeah, it's. It's, you know, we had that quokka thing for a while. We, you know, we did some stuff for countries. Um, but we're, well, yeah. I mean, if we had, if I had more time and more power and people could do it. I mean, we've got the startups of Hula, which I think is really exciting. But yeah, now the possibilities are there. We just have to, yeah. What's like the company company Well, what you want is the emotional stuff and what, how it's being talked about. Right? What are the stories that are being talked about? What, what, and what is its character? What is the, so like Coke versus Pepsi, you know, what, there's what, there's what they're trying to put out there. Of course, they're a team working together, really, right? Because they, you know, um, so you want to study that as well. So what do people, so you want to present, like, I mean, we thought about this a lot. If you want to present to someone doing this analysis, here's how Coke and Pepsi and whatever else is being talked about. And here's how that kind of, market sector is being talked about as a whole compared to, you know, baseball bats or something, you know, like whatever else you want to compare it to. Um, yeah. How do you fit in with, and how has it changed over time? So you know, we looked at a few, we looked at car brands, which is pretty interesting. We sort of had a little development with that. Um, you know, the luxury type ones, you know, how do people, this is how they present it, but how do people really discuss them and talk about them and, Um, I want to, I, I, it makes me think of the, this is a different, but then you could, oh, we did have this too. Like this is a, this is a much older thing, but the paper title would be something like there is accounting for taste and it would be how restaurants are talked about in, you know, cities around, but the anchor would be, um, fast food places, right? So there's McDonald's everywhere. So that would, that would become your kind of like, you know, like, Maybe people like McDonald's more than, you know, like what's, what's a, what's a. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. I want to be very clear about that. This is absolutely anything. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yes. And you, you guys are doing it, right? You're playing around with books. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, the way we've done it is just like, it has to be, I mean, you know, I showed this toxicity thing for a couple of reasons. One is, you know, it's, <laughs> come on, but it's, you know, it's also a good example of just a complete disaster, right? Like, uh, and, and it, anything, I mean, NLP, you know, it's famously had a, problems forever with, with sentences. I mean, there's been massive improvements, but it's still pretty hard to bear, just the nature of writing, the bare, a bare sentence by itself without any ups and downs or some context, you know, depending on where you stress it, it, it takes a lot to really, understand what's being said, you know? And, you know, even for humans, right? We miss things all the time, right? Um, through, through when information is, or stories are mediated through text, uh, strips a lot out, but it makes it very powerful, right? Cause you've got to do the, you know, you've got to set the scene, you've got to do all the, you know, we enjoy, we enjoy it a lot. Right? Okay, so this is, so Vermont's up there because of um, 
you know, this, there's some stuff you can see would be coming from the sort of industry, like skiing and so on. But there's less, so less swearing, right? Just relative to everyone else. Um, you know, and this, this can be a socioeconomic thing that it's, a, you know, uh, less bored, less can't, less ugly, you know, some of this stuff. Um, but generally, you can see it's actually because it's, 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 there's less negativity expressed. There's more positivity for sure, but they're sort of the dominant pieces here. So that's a useful thing to see. And if you go to somewhere like Louisiana, uh, which is, I guess, 50th on this, I think we have DC as well. So maybe it's not the lowest. Maybe it's, yeah, Mississippi. All right, let's pick on Mississippi. Yeah, it's going to be, oh, that didn't change. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so sort of depends on, you know, who's running Twitter, right? Are they, these are probably more people, for sure. You know, some of the Vermont ones are going to be from resorts or restaurants or that sort of thing. So, you know, this it's a big scale thing and sort of clearly could be made better and more powerful. Um, it did, And I'll show you, it does match up with, let me show you the madness here too, though. You can play around with the lens, right? See that? So you can adjust the lens to anything you want. This little madness here and slide it around. So it gets pretty weird when you just say, let's, let's take all the positive words, right? That's a different thing. The rankings have kind of changed. Um, Vermont's still pretty good there, I think. If you go to negative, oh, maybe not, maybe. Maybe it's not adjusting properly, anyway. Uh, that's wide default, right? This is kind of our little game. It's pretty nice. That was the first time we kind of made a made it more of a instrumenty thing online. I know it's a bit, it, probably a bit too exotic, but it's um, you know, we're trying to figure out how this thing works. Okay, so uh, that's most of the press, I think. Yeah. Probably I'll, the kinetic one, I'll just leave it as a said thing, but I do have a video of that somewhere. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is what we had. So we have it for three years, um, and you can kind of check where things are. There's Rhode Island, which is you know germane to the thing. I have these videos embedded in here. I'll just skip past them. But um, okay, so with this paper, we did try it. You know, to, we, we've connected things to Gallup polls before, but. This was just trying to connect to a lot of these other indices that are floating around uh, that people use to you know, kind of rank states or places or whatever, what have you. This is for the US. So there's a gun violence index. This is a kind of a health one, I think, just a peace level. This is Gallup survey based stuff. This is a weird composite one, which has been used by people to, to measure well being. Um, it just, we, we sort of see it doesn't hold up so well. So this is. Um, okay, so what's going on? This is, uh, you know, happiness is on the on the um, vertical axis here, and then it's being compared to all these, and then we have this BRFS one being compared to the, we only need a triangle here. Um, yeah, and then Gallup well-being compared to the, we kind of should have all of them, so it's easier to read the whole thing, but anyway, you kind of have to flip it around. All right, so um, gun violence, you know, right? So that's negatively correlated with, with our happiness measure. Um, and happiness goes up with this health one, up with this peace one, up with, it's pretty messy, but up with Gallup. Not a very good correlation here at all. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty bad. There's a paper that appeared in Science some years ago that uh, ranked states in the US and it had Louisiana at number one for happiness because of this scale kind of puts a lot of weird things into it. And um, they have a whole paragraph where they're trying to explain why it's right. But I think they, I did speak with the author. I think they're, they were pretty concerned about the quality of that. Um, yeah, they're from different. So the happiness, they're different things, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. For calling is hard, is what, oh, super hard, yeah. I mean, Gallup's the big, and Pew, they're big, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. And they've adapted perhaps slowly, but, you know, right. People used to pick up landlines all the time, just at home. If someone called you, it's like, sure, I'll answer it. Like my wife's parents answer anything that, that, that rings on any surface in any place. They're like, someone should answer the phone. And I'm much more like, I think what your generation is like, which is like, Good God, you know what? <laughs> Who uses a phone as a phone, which is a Troy line in community? Um, <laughs> what is the. <laughs> you know, an unknown caller? Oh my God! I know it's Vermont, right? So it's like it's Friday or something. You know? It's like <laughs> we were we were at Crossbury skiing when that happened. It was fun to be in, and I didn't. Our phones didn't give us a message, but people, our, some of our friends, yes. I felt a little left out. Okay, that's 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 probably a useful message. Did it go bad for driving? Oh, it was the dangerous thing. Yeah, right, 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 right. That's, which is a more generally a huge problem. Like that, you, you know, you could make a mistake and evacuate everyone from Los Angeles because you think an earthquake's coming. Would cause, like, it'll be compl so you know your your error has to be way, way, way. You know, your margin has to be way away from that. Um. <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. Or, or um, just fire alarms, right? I mean, I remember living in a house in Cambridge, and the, like 3 a.m., the fire alarm went off, and I opened the back door to the stairwell, and it was just like completely disabled, almost like I felt like you know it was just a skeleton left. It just went, <clears throat> and I shut the door and then tried to figure out what to do, but my brain was gone. You know, so it's like this is disabling. I mean, I know the point of it, but it's sort of, and then. It, and those things tend to go off every three days. So. Yeah, no, it was, it was not. It was a uh, not great. Anyway, so this is to show that you know we've made we've done this weird measure, which isn't perfect, right? But it's and it's, it's something that can be done in real time, um, and correlates well with a number of other indices, which themselves are not perfect. But it did sort of suggest that this this weird one that people have been using is is not great. Again, one number, pretty dangerous. These are. Well, a few of these, you know, gun violence is is a specific thing, so that's useful. Um, this health one is more of an index kind of thing, more of an index, kind of, you know, which, of course, we, I've sort of said over and over, like one number is pretty dangerous. And the BRFSS one is a huge, like just a lot of stuff goes into that. Um, behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System Survey. Wow, that is a, that's, that's one. Okay, happier cities were here, right? So it's going to be a lot of these places that are, uh, yeah, they're okay. What's Simi Valley? I don't know. What's Simi Valley? Oh, okay. Which makes it seem like a, what kind of place? It makes it seem like a place for like influencers. Oh, okay. All right. So this could be, yeah. So there's a fair amount of like, you know, vacuous stuff that might come out of this or just like marketing or whatever it can, be, can be behind this. So this might be less real people, but you know, certainly a sense of tourists. Um, we've had different, yeah, so this is the lowest one and I've flipped it up. So unfortunately when you do this and you have 500 cities, there's gonna be one at the bottom and it's Beaumont, right? So this that became a bit of a story. You know, you saw it a little bit in that thing. That became a bit of a story. Um, it's not, you know, Flint famously has had a lot of um, terrible things happen in Flint um, with the water and all this sort of stuff. So this is uh, a lot of hard times. And um, 
you know, it's been it's got a lot of attention for it. Uh, Beaumont, Texas, you familiar with? No. So this is just looking at those cities. I think do I have the cities? Yeah. So you can see now, like, so Napa, there's less swearing, but restaurant, wine, you know, even just talking about Christmas, which seems ridiculous. Um, just a lot of, you know, this beautiful coffee. Valley is a good word by itself. You have to be, you know, obviously you need to be careful with words like that. There was um, Battle Creek is a is a city that was in this list. We had to take Battle out because. Yeah. Uh, and then Beaumont's got a lot of swearing going on. So this is, you know, it seems like people, there's arrest, you know, all these sorts of things. So um, again, we don't want to impugn that, but you know, this is something that could be used over time. Maybe it's too complicated for public policy stuff, probably. Yes. Right. So this is some of those reactions. I'll get rid of those. So this is uh, this is from this blog, which I you know I told you is kind of cactus at the moment. But um, someone posted this on our blog, uh, and they got really into it. Obviously, as you can, uh, the study confirms my suspicions that cities don't get any more miserable than this. All right. So, I mean, this is brutal. Uh, and there was maybe a couple of hours later, there was a post that said was clearly from someone, you know, was trying to like, you know, we were, two, it said, I think it said we're two hours from the coast, you know, like it's got a bunch of municipal, like, you know, trying to like say it's okay. Um, you know, I don't want to, right. Okay. Okay. So it, it yeah. And an excellent, excellent, um, their uh, user handle is an interesting one. Uh, Beaumont, we got, this is the local paper. This is the entire article. Eggheads find Beaumont as the saddest city. That's what, right, after you have determined the method they've plotted. And that's it. I think that was the entire article. So. Uh, I think so. <laughs> It's like boom. I mean, it's a oh, it's a satire thing. So that you know, they're they they that's all they needed, right? They're, they're in good shape. This is this is like stuff happen. I mean, we've, now we're messing with the system. Um, this is this is. I don't you know we don't want right, but anyway, um, okay, so that's kind of enough of that. I suppose. Uh, I do. We do have the cities one. Let's see if that how that looks. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. No, it's okay. Uh, cities. I think we just have them kind of linked. Um, right. So this is this is for 2014. So Boulder was number one then. You know, depend on the year. Thousand Oaks, which. That things happen. So, um, this is a much longer list. And in this list, this is for 2014, you know, there's similar places down the bottom. Um, Racine, Wisconsin's there, I don't know. But again, it's going to be a fair amount of swearing, seems to be the. <sighs> yeah, certain kinds of swearing. Is that down here? Just the name is amazing. Um, similar kind of game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it? Wow. Yeah, so it's um, regions. They're talking about rain a lot. So this feels like this is a problem. This looks like we got weather, weather stuff in there. So that's not good. That doesn't seem right. Oh well. Okay. Uh, you can see it's. I think they took that out because I think that was a, because they did that for Trump, right? They like, like that was a thing for Trump for some reason. Like, like they knew if he changed bonds. I, I can't remember what the point of that was, but. Yeah, that's maybe maybe it's in there's a lot of metadata. I can't remember if that was taken out because I think they've tried to make it a little more private. 
like location is, you know. Um, yeah, you could, do you want to like compare like, oh, Apple versus Apple. There's a socioeconomic index which goes through the whole thing. Um, this is a, a work that was led by, uh, I've got to change it, um, um, Morgan Frank, who's now a professor at um, um, Pittsburgh, University of Pittsburgh. He's in the business school there, or information school, I should say. Yeah. And um, so this is work he did as a master's undergrad and master. He was an undergrad with us, and then he did a master's, and he left with uh, he left here with a master's with a two year master's with um, ten papers, and, and then did his uh, he was on ten papers, which is ridiculous, and then um, did a PhD in the media lab um, with Iyad Rawan. It's very he's done some very interesting things on networks of skills, how skills are connected to each other because of the jobs they're involved in, and then that's a so that's Similar sort of thing, but it's a really just you know looking at cities, but this sort of deep comparison of kind of the network structure of jobs and skills that are in cities now, and then how they're moving, and you know, are you able to adapt potentially to, to what's coming? Um, it thinks a lot about automation. Anyway, so he's, he's uh, he, and we still work with him on lots of things. Uh, great dude. So this is a measure of this average happiness. Now we're going to look at where people are based on their average. Average location, like how far away are they from from home? And so people, as, as they're further away, this is kilometers, they tend to be, you know, they're probably traveling and, you know, this is like their own, um, you know, maybe some of it's business, some of it would be tourism. But, you know, we grow fonder as we wander is sort of the story there. So that's one thing, that's for a person. And then this is based on someone's typical kind of um length scale of how far they move around, right? So you get these, where they've, based on where they've tweeted, you, we develop a sort of a map for them. And uh, people will have, you know, some people only tweet in one region, right? They don't go very far. Some people go, da, da, da. And so that seems to be a story there too, that the ones who move around more seem to be happier. The ones who don't seem to move far at all seem to be okay too, but. Yeah, yeah, because what, and let me, I don't know why I don't have this. Uh, okay, so this, uh, we put it in scientific reports. We'll put it. So this is just, I should have had more of these in. This is just a map of where the tweets are from, right? There's no underlying map of the US. This is just points, lat long points, and you can see it fills in. And, you know, this is, you, I mean, just the road network comes out, right? Obviously, the cities. You know, people live along these places. Maybe they're tweeting while driving or something like that. But, um, you know, and then then some some detailed areas and, and the and the you know the whole you can see Australia is like yeah you know, this this corresponds quite well with like the light you know if you have pictures of the Earth at night sort of thing um, where people are right so pretty I mean I mean this is for half a year in um, in uh, 2011. Initially, yeah, our website was one happy bird was what we had to start with. Anyway. Um, so, you know, I mean, this in itself is, an, I mean, very familiar with it. It's probably not, spoke, but it's just ridiculous, right? It's really is a ridiculous amount of stuff. Um, these are for cities, right? San Francisco, New York City, you can see the resolution of them. Um, okay, so this plot. So this is, so we take each user uh, and, you know, shot all their points where they've tweeted from, make a little histogram, and then rotate it around so that um, the main axis, you know, you can do a sort of analysis of do the main axis of movement so they're lined up, um, and then superimpose them. So this is many, many, many users put together. Some, of course, just have a small, right, they never move. Some do this, and then, you know, it's more and more scattered. So it's a big composite of many people. There's work that was done um, earlier by... Um, Mara Gonzalez and, and part of the Barabaji team at North, they were at Northeast and, and that did this for cell phones. And, um, you know, with data that we don't know about, right, that's from some European, this is a weird data set. No one knows where it's from, right? They just say, we have data from a, 
phone company because that phone company called them up and said, we'd like to give you, we like your work, we'd like to give you a ton of data. It's a weird transition in science and there's uh, been pushback on this. It just says, we can't tell you. So there's no way you can reanalyze this, right? I mean, you can analyze the data they maybe put out. But basically it had the same kind of, the same sort of pattern, so the same sort of thing. And really this is, and sociologists have talked about this for a long time, um, the two locations of home and work, right? So there's this tick, 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 right, that most people go through. Then there are third locations, fourth locations, and fifth locations that people frequent, and they tend to be off axis and messed around, right? So it could be like, the thing that came to my head is pickleball, and I hate myself for it, but you know, like there's your pickleball team or your church or whatever it is that you go to, you know, regularly or something, skiing or whatever it is, right? There's some place you go to regularly. Um, so that kind of scatters in and fills this. But yeah, this idea of these sort of two places, and then the third place is really important. So Starbucks, when they, created themselves, that was a thing they talked about. Like they wanted to be the third place for people. Um, which, you know, they, you can see, you know, there's like a Wi-Fi, places to sit forever, and it kind of worked. I mean, pubs in places like England or whatever, you know, they're on every corner and they're very much the third place for, um, well, traditionally for uh, the male to get them out of the, the family. Um, okay, so there was that. That's a that's that's a good one. We have a bunch of other things in there. Okay, so I want to bring up the Gonzalez one. I'll just say this last thing about the uh, Gonzalez work is that it has a um, it's for cell phones, and how often people are in these locations, you can plot that right. So you can see they're much more commonly here, and then less commonly here, and so on. It's a terrible color scale. Um, you get a zip distribution for that. Right, so some people only go to two places. Some people go only three places. Some people go to ten regularly. And if you kind of put them, if you kind of organize them and put them on top of each other, you get a, you know, ranks for their locations and then how frequently they're there. It fits. It's another power law decay thing. I don't. I think it was a nice, uh, nice. You know, how do people move around? And then they followed up with, uh, you know, this is get, start, starts to get creepy, obviously, but. Um, based on someone's past with their cell phone, how predictable are they? It's pretty bad. Like it's like 90% of a, you know, because people have workplaces they go to and whatever. And the lowest things are like Friday night, which should make sense, right? Friday night, could, they could go to different places. It's more variable. But gen being able to kind of just guess where someone is is really high um, if, you, if you know their the past. Okay. All right, so this is a good good place to sort of lead into it. So this is stuff that I'm still playing around with and I'll give you data to mess with as well. Um, order is a bit funny. So we, so same sort of, it's the same, the same study, same idea, same approach as the happiness thing. We're gonna give people what, you know, we did this a while ago. We give people um, words on Mechanical Turk and then we'll tell them to rate them on anger and disgust and these things. And I think, yeah. So the ratings we used were it's connected to this, again, to, I showed you this for um, happiness. But these are the six, yeah, so six emotions. And so they're, they're lined up here. Let me just get this right. So this is from Scott McLeod's um, books. There's um, three books on comics, which if you like comics, maybe you, would, you should, they're pretty incredible things. I mean, they're graphic novels themselves that are all about comics. So this is about creating, this is from making comics, I think. So it's about drawing people's emotions into their faces and it's based on Ekman's, Ekman's sort of famous for this um, I, um, work that, you know, and it, there's a lot of arguments about it, I guess, but that your face, your face conveys emotions, right? The, the musculature in particular um, orientations will convey something and, and we you know we can we can pick it up that got tighter and tighter into things like micro expressions so someone's there and then they have like a little flash of disgust and some people are good at picking this up they're good at reading other people's face no one else sees anything but this person says that one's that person's angry it got made into a tv show called lie to me um you know it was a i don't know if you've heard of it it's a, you know it's one of one of the big you know nbc or whatever 
maybe three seasons. But that was the, you know, it's a procedural and that was the whole structure of it. You had these kind of genius people who could see that someone did something, could read people. So the idea is that, and it's really this axis here are these so-called six emotions, surprise, sadness, joy, fear, disgust, anger. There are arguments about this, of course, but this, this, this is one concept, one theory, um, you know, which is the idea is that it's supported. It's, it's, um, it's supported by the fact that our faces do these things or connected with it. So surprise is kind of off by itself a little bit. So it's a, you know, the extreme is shock. So these are, there's like a Likert scale again, zero here, alert, wonder, surprise, shock, right? Yeah, wonder. Yeah, you, I mean, he's trying to he's trying to make this work, and it's got a nice little thing in the background. So this is sadness goes through these different stages here. Joy, which would be the happiness one. So the the negative ones are here, right? Sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. And I, again, this is this idea that when bad things happen, we have to have you know good semantic differentiation between them because we need to you know, re respond. When things are going well, we just sort of have, we're happy. That's the idea. Um, yeah, so to, you know, figuring out which words are the right descriptions here are interesting. I think hate, from what I'm seeing now, might be a mixture of these two. Disgust and anger is kind of hate. Um, okay, so we use this Conception is very nicely done because it's got the four, you know, it's a, there's a neutral face and then these, these four this way uh, for a Likert scale, you know. Okay, good. And so these are people's responses to words for, for anger and disgust. So, you know, how do you feel? So war, these are, you know, these are all bad things. Um, not No anger here, right? There's actually zero, no one... This is all ranked neutral. These are piano. People aren't angry when they see the word piano. Daughter in law, which is kind of a nice play idea. So these are all very neutral there. Um, and disgust. So you, what you start to see is similar kinds of words. There are some that are different. This is a different one. Um, Holocaust is here. Maybe doesn't, you know, disgust is there. But uh, this, this, I'm going to say, is a problem with looking at individual words. Maybe not. I'm not sure if you can do it in general. Can you measure? These things are often entwined. So again, war is number one, right? For fear, uh, tortured is here, da, da, da. Bath, clearly we didn't um, interview cats or babies because that sort of been, this would have been number one. Um, and surprise, so people are not surprised by Beans and Johnson, but you know, there are, this is a bit different. Now we've got lottery in there, right? So this is a, some slightly different things. No one's afraid of that. Earthquake, definitely a dangerous thing. Slap is in there. This is just looking at the words, just trying to figure it out. And then you can start to build the, these little things. Try a few configurations here, but this is the word earthquake. So, you know, fear and surprise in the Spanish Inquisition. We should just now watch Monty Python for <laughs> 10 minutes. Um, but they get it, right? Our two chief weapons are fear and surprise. I know, what is it, a ruthless, dedic fanatical dedication to the Pope. Our oh, three, three chief weapons will come in again. It's amazing. It's just amazing. <laughs> our four, amongst our weaponry. Okay, so um, so happiness very low, right? So this is, a, you know, these radar plots that I quite like. I mean, it could simply be a histogram, right? That, that could be, but these can make splotches that are sort of, you know, you, if you look across a whole bunch of them, one thing with radar plots, you don't want to put two different radar plots on top of each other. That's just absurd. I don't know why, you know, I don't know why people do it. So earthquakes there. Um, oh, these are units of measurement. The eek for fear, wa for sadness, u for disgust, the gro for anger, the ha, and the wow. <laughs> this is totally wrong. And then, you know, putting, the, uh, putting, putting together with the things, right? So pop. You can see it. Bunch of examples. The laughter, you know, it's more on the joy one, right? The happiness, a little bit of surprise. But if you look at something like war and torture, they're pretty similar. I mean, obviously, but just in terms of the sort of raw emotion that comes through. 
So I think this is what we see a lot. There's a lot of correlation between those two. And in some ways, what's really happening is at least through individual words, you really only get happiness, surprise, and then these four are pretty much connected. You know, a word like rutting is really distinct and disgust. It does separate a bit. But in aggregate, if you're going to try and build a disgustometer, it's going to look like a fearometer. I'm not sure. I think this is a thing we'll play with a little bit. Then you get some other words like, uh, so veterans, this is more of a compassion kind of result, right? So there's some, there's positivity and, 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 and some sadness. And it's, it's more explicitly sadness, right? So individual words are going to have their own text. It's more sadness here, surprises up a little bit, but it's, yeah. I mean, it's compassion. Pity is another word you could use, but compassion is, um, you know, it's a, it's a more complicated thing. <sighs> yeah, no, so that's the thing. I think a lot of these really negative words are out here because, yeah, all, they, they, they amp all of those pieces up. So as a single word. Yeah. So there's a lot to think about here. And I think that's part of what's going on is, is that, um, it, I mean, look, a big, what, what's happening is that in terms of single words in aggregate kind of conveying distinct, these, these nuanced things, they, they kind of can tell you something bad is happening, but then you have to really go in and, and look at, like it's the big, so in some ways the big dimensions are positive, negative, and then the, sec the, the next dimension that goes with that is um, intensity, right? So it's sort of like war is bad and intense and joy is good and intense. They're sort of, that's a two dimensional kind of thing. And then the rest of the dimensions. So if you do an SVD thing on this, the next four dimensions are all about um, nuances of negativity. So the first thing is bad and then, you, and then it's like, but like shifts it around to show that it's, I don't know if this will play, but like the third dimension could be hate, for example, like it's bad and hate. And then there's sort of a fear one, maybe like, yeah. So often disgust and anger seem to be really strongly correlated. Now in your body, you know, when you feel like disgust, right, it's bad taste. I mean, it's, it's really elemental and it's like an amoeba can have disgust and it's like eat something bad, but um, you know, Bunnies have disgust, right? And in, in, in this sort of like, it's, it tastes bad. Um, that's a pretty good thing to have built into your sensible thing, right? Fear is like somebody's going to eat me, so I have to run away, right? Um, disgust is like, uh, you know, like don't eat that. Yeah, I wonder if we could break down how much is being eaten and not eaten. Um, Ang anger is, you know, something's terribly wrong, like really wrong, and it's really dangerous or something like that. Yeah. All right. So. So okay, let's 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 um. Probably the best place now is. So lots of conceptions about emotional states. Uh, and so there's a whole constellation of these things. Let's see. So, um, yeah, these are funny ones. So th this is, this is a bit different, I think, to what I just showed you. Yeah. Right. Um, two dimensions of emotion. There's the emotion wheel. This is, um, Puchik, I think did this one. I don't know about this either, right? But this is a complete, I mean, there's a lot, you have to really think, does this kind of work as a dimensional space properly, right? So there's kind of a, I, these things really upset me because I can't, you know, like you really, like you're being told a thing and you have to like figure out if it's a, so it looks like, okay. So in this one, the more intense things were in the middle. So this is completely confusing to me. Um, uh, although that, uh, like these seem softer out here. 
I don't know. I don't know. It should, right? Um, love, yeah, you're right. I don't, I, hmm. All right, so it doesn't seem to be an act, you know, like it's from the, I mean, some things don't fit into two dimensions, right? That's kind of the problem here. Um, but amazement's next to grief, right? So that doesn't feel right to me. Um, there are lots of these things. I, I, I'm just sort of throwing these up. But if you go to things like, What's kind of amazing, there's uh, 18, yeah, late, late 1800s, um, people had this kind of idea about this and that there were these dimensional things, even William James back here, a couple of others. So that's pretty cool. But if you look at, right, so psychologists are all trying to like get people's brains to do things and do things and do horrible experiments. Um, but I think if we, I want to find like say, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Oof. Um, let's say, you know, hey, like, oh, it's not good. Wiki anger. I think this should show like a big space that they consider to be emotions. Uh, this looks like it's changed. Hmm. Huh. Okay. I can't find it, but you see, this is, you know, what we've talked about this is the PAD, this is the um, pleasure, um, arousal, dominance one, or VAD, which is what we're gonna get to next, uh, valence, da da da. Ekman, I just talked about him, right? So this is these six things, da da da. Oh, expanded them. The new include emotions are amusement, contempt, contentment, embarrassment, excitement, guilt, pride, and achievement. Okay, a lot more, and shame. Lots, lots of arguments. <sighs> you know, what's opposite, if things are opposite to each other, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. All right. But you, what was your question exactly was? Frustration. Yeah, so. Let's see if it's actually, see, so, right, so they've, they've all been kind of corralled, right, there's organization here. Um, it's definitely, yeah, it's a, yeah, so there you go, if you had these things, it's adjacent. Um, yeah, so anger, so it could go into depression, right? So frustration can lead to, depression is shutting down. Um, annoyance, aggression, violence, da, da, da. So I, it's at least a couple of things, a couple of paths that people might take. Um, ghosting, ghosting. Should be in there, ghost someone. You know, and so the thing is to call these emotions, I think at some point it's not right. Like these are states of mind, I think is a more general thing. Like. Frustration is a state of being, like you're in a frustrated situation. You're frustrated, you know, and it can be more or less cognitive, right? And then some emotions can be very basic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, I mean, they're basically like big signals that help you respond to something quickly. You know, like full of adrenaline, run away or attack or whatever, you know. So you don't have to sit there thinking about it, which of course can lead to, disaster in lots of ways, but they, you know, they're there for survival reasons, which, you know, having, thinking a tiger is attacking you in a board meeting, you gotta be careful with that, right? But, you know, we, right. Okay, all right, that's not a bad place to get to. We, we, we're, we're gonna expand our horizons to other things. Okay, people, cool. We did it.